Qasim Soleimani, Persian. B apostrophe 3 E 3 D F E, pronounced B R E D I Grav S E M E, Solij Murdinid, 11 March 1957 3 January 2020, was an Iranian major general in the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, IRGC, and, from 1998 until his death in 2020, commander of its Quds Force, a division primarily responsible for extraterritorial military and clandestine operations. Soleimani began his military career at the start of the Iran-Iraq War during the 1980s, eventually commanding the 41st Division. He was later involved in extraterritorial operations, providing military assistance to Hezbollah in Lebanon. In 2012, Soleimani helped bolster the government of Bashar al-Assad, a key Iranian ally, during Iran's operations in the Syrian civil war, and helped to plan the Russian military intervention in Syria. Soleimani oversaw the Kurdish and Shia militia forces in Iraq and assisted the Iraqi forces that advanced against ISIL in 2014-2015. Soleimani was one of the first to support Kurdish forces, providing them with arms. He maintained a low profile during most of his career. Soleimani was widely popular among Iranians, where his supporters viewed him as a selfless hero fighting Iran's enemies. Soleimani was personally sanctioned by the United Nations and the European Union and was designated as a terrorist by the United States. Soleimani was killed in a targeted U.S. drone strike on 3 January 2020 in Baghdad, which was approved by President Donald Trump. A multi-city funeral was held in Iraq and Iran for the killed general and other casualties. Hours after Soleimani's burial on 7 January 2020, the Iranian military launched missiles against U.S. bases in Iraq, no American or Iraqi lives were lost in the attack. Early life. Early life. Soleimani was born on 11 March 1957, in the village of Kanadi Malek, Kerman province. After he finished school, he moved to the city of Kerman and worked on a construction site to help repay his father's agricultural debts. In 1975, he began working as a contractor for the Kerman Water Organization. When not at work, he spent his time with weight training in local gyms or attending the sermons of Hajid Kamyab, a preacher and a protege of Ali Khamenei, who according to Soleimani, spurred him to revolutionary activities. Military career. Soleimani joined the Revolutionary Guard IRGC, in 1979 following the Iranian Revolution, which saw the Shah fall and Ayatollah Khamenei take power. Reportedly, his training was minimal, but he advanced rapidly. Early in his career as a guardsman, he was stationed in northwestern Iran and participated in the suppression of a Kurdish separatist uprising in West Azerbaijan province. I entered the Iran-Iraq war on a 15-day mission and ended up staying until the end we were all young and wanted to serve the revolution. Quoted in Dexter Filkins, 30 September 2013, The Shadow Commander, The New Yorker. On 22 September 1980, when Saddam Hussein launched an invasion of Iran, setting off the Iran-Iraq War, 1980-1988, Soleimani joined the battlefield, serving as the leader of a military company, consisting of men from Kerman whom he assembled and trained. He quickly earned a reputation for bravery and rose through the ranks because of his role in successful operations to retake the lands Iraq had occupied and eventually became the commander of the 41st Therala Division while still in his twenties, participating in most major operations. He was mostly stationed at the Southern Front. He was seriously injured in Operation Tarek al Qads. In a 1990 interview, he mentioned Operation Fath al Mabin as the best operation he participated in and very memorable, due to its difficulties yet positive outcome. He was also engaged in leading and organizing irregular warfare missions deep inside Iraq, by the Ramadan headquarters. Clarification needed, it was at this point that Soleimani established relations with Kurdish Iraqi leaders and the Shia Badr organization, both opposed to Iraq's Saddam Hussein. On 17 July 1985, Soleimani opposed the IRGC leadership's plan to deploy forces to two islands in western Arvind Rudd, on the Shad al Arab River. After the war, during the 1990s, he was an IRGC commander in Kerman province. In this region, which is relatively close to Afghanistan, Afghan-grown opium travels to Turkey and on to Europe. Soleimani's military experience helped him earn a reputation as a successful fighter against drug trafficking. During the 1999 student revolt in Tehran, Soleimani was one of the IRGC officers who signed a letter to President Mohammad Khatami. The letter stated that if Katami did not crush the student rebellion, the military would, and it might also launch a coup against Katami. Command of Quds Force. The exact date of his appointment as commander of the IRGC's Quds Force is not clear, but Ali Alfana cites it as between 10 September 1997 
and 21 March 1998. He was considered one of the possible successors to the post of commander of the IRGC when General Yahya Rahim Safavi left this post in 2007. In 2008, he led a group of Iranian investigators looking into the death of Imad Magniya. Soleimani helped arrange a ceasefire between the Iraqi army and Mahdi army in March 2008. Following the September 11 attacks in 2001, senior U.S. State Department official Ryan Crocker flew to Geneva to meet with Iranian diplomats who were under the direction of Soleimani with the purpose of collaborating to destroy the Taliban. This collaboration was instrumental in defining the targets of bombing operations in Afghanistan and in capturing key al-Qaeda operatives, but abruptly ended in January 2002 when President George W. Bush named Iran as part of the axis of evil in his State of the Union address. Soleimani strengthened the relationship between Quds Force and Hezbollah upon his appointment and supported the latter by sending in operatives to retake southern Lebanon. In an interview aired in October 2019, he said he was in Lebanon during the 2006 Israel-Hezbollah war to oversee the conflict. In 2009, The Economist stated based on a leaked report that Christopher R. Hill and General Raymond Teodierno, America's two most senior officials in Baghdad at the time, met with Soleimani in the office of Iraq's president, Jalal Talabani, but withdrew the story after Hill and Odierno denied the occurrence of the meeting. On 24 January 2011, Soleimani was promoted to major general by Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei. Khamenei was described as having a close relationship with him, calling Soleimani a living martyr and helping him financially. Soleimani was described by an ex-CIA operative as the single most powerful operative in the Middle East today and the principal military strategist and tactician in Iran's effort to combat Western influence and promote the expansion of Shiite and Iranian influence throughout the Middle East. In Iraq, as the commander of the Quds Force, he was believed to have strongly influenced the organization of the Iraqi government, notably supporting the election of previous Iraqi Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki. Syrian Civil War According to several sources, including Riyad Hijab, a former Syrian premier who defected in August 2012, Soleimani was one of the staunchest supporters of the Syrian government of Bashar al-Assad in the Syrian Civil War. In the later half of 2012, Soleimani assumed personal control of the Iranian intervention in the Syrian civil war, when the Iranians became deeply concerned about the Assad government's lack of ability to fight the opposition and the fallout to the Islamic Republic if the Syrian government fell. He reportedly coordinated the war from a base in Damascus, at which a Lebanese Hezbollah commander and an Iraqi Shiite militia coordinator were mobilized, in addition to Syrian and Iranian officers. Under Soleimani the command coordinated attacks, trained militias, and set up an elaborate system to monitor rebel communications. According to a Middle Eastern security official Dexter Filkins talked to, thousands of Quds Force and Iraqi Shiite militiamen in Syria were spread out across the entire country. The retaking of Qusar in May 2013 from rebel forces and al-Nusra Front was, according to John McGuire, a former CIA officer in Iraq, orchestrated by Soleimani. Brigadier General Hossein Hamadani, the Basij's former deputy commander, helped to run irregular militias that Soleimani hoped would continue the fight if Assad fell. Soleimani helped establish the National Defense Forces, NDF, in 2013, which would formalize the coalition of pro-Assad groups. Soleimani was much credited in Syria for the strategy that assisted President Bashar al-Assad in finally repulsing rebel forces and recapturing key cities and towns. He was involved in the training of government allied militias and the coordination of decisive military offensives. The sighting of Iranian UAVs in Syria strongly suggested that his command, the Quds Force, was involved in the civil war. In a visit to the Lebanese capital Beirut on 29 January 2015, Soleimani laid wreaths at the graves of the slain Hezbollah members, including Jihad Magniya, which strengthened suspicions about a collaboration between Hezbollah and the Quds Force orchestration of military escalation in 2015. In 2015, Soleimani began gathering support from various sources to combat the newly resurgent ISIL and rebel groups, which had both successfully taken large swaths of territory from Assad's forces. He was reportedly the main architect of the joint intervention involving Russia as a new partner with Assad and Hezbollah. According to Reuters, at a meeting in Moscow in July, Soleimani unfurled a map of Syria to explain to his Russian hosts how a series of defeats for President Bashar al-Assad could be turned into victory with Russia's help. Soleimani's visit to Moscow was the first step in planning for a Russian military intervention that has reshaped the Syrian war and forged a new Iran-Russia alliance in support of the Syrian and Iraqi governments.
Iran's supreme leader, Ali Khamenei, also sent a senior envoy to Moscow to meet President Vladimir Putin. Putin reportedly told a senior Iranian envoy OK, we will intervene. Send Qasem Soleimani. General Soleimani went to explain the map of the theater and coordinate the strategic escalation of military forces in Syria. War against ISIL in Iraq. Soleimani played a key role in Iran's fight against ISIL in Iraq. He is described as the linchpin bringing together Kurdish and Shia forces to fight ISIS, overseeing joint operations conducted by the two groups. In 2014, Soleimani was in the Iraqi city of Amurli to work with Iraqi forces to push back ISIL militants. The Los Angeles Times reported that Amurli was the first town to successfully withstand an ISIL invasion and was secured thanks to an unusual partnership of Iraqi and Kurdish soldiers, Iranian-backed Shiite militias and U.S. warplanes. The U.S. acted as a force multiplier for a number of Iranian-backed armed groups, at the same time THAT clarification needed was present on the battlefield. A senior Iraqi official told the BBC that when the city of Mosul fell, the rapid reaction of Iran, rather than American bombing, was what prevented a more widespread collapse. Soleimani also seems to have been instrumental in planning the operation to relieve a Merli and Saladin governorate, where ISIL had laid siege to an important city. In fact, the Quds force operatives under Soleimani's command seem to have been deeply involved with not only the Iraqi army and Shiite militias, but also the Kurdish in the Battle of Amurli, not only providing liaisons for intelligence sharing, but also the supply of arms and munitions, in addition to providing expertise. In the operation to liberate Jurf al sakr he was reportedly present on the battlefield. Some Shia militia commanders described Soleimani as fearless, one pointing out that the Iranian general never wears a flak jacket, even on the front lines. Personal life and public image. His father, Hassan, was a farmer who died in 2017. His mother, Fatima, died in 2013. He had five siblings. His brother, Sorab, who lived and worked with Soleimani in his youth, is now a warden and former director general of the Tehran Prisons Organization. The U.S. imposed sanctions on Sorab Soleimani in April 2017 for his role in abuses in Iranian prisons. Soleimani practiced karate and was a fitness trainer in his youth. He had five children. Three sons and two daughters. One of his daughters, Zainab, was asking for revenge after her father's death. He was described as having a calm presence and as carrying himself inconspicuously and rarely raising his voice, exhibiting understated charisma. In Western sources, Soleimani's personality was compared to the fictional characters Carla, Kaiser Soz, and the Scarlet Pimpernel. Unlike other IRGC commanders, he usually did not appear in his official military clothing, even on the battlefield. In January 2015, Hadi al-Amari, the head of the Badr organization in Iraq said of him, If Qasem Soleimani was not present in Iraq, Haider al-Abadi would not be able to form his cabinet within Iraq. Qasem Soleimani was a popular national figure in Iran. According to a poll conducted by the University of Maryland School of Public Policy, by October 2019, Soleimani was viewed favorably by 82% of Iranians, with 59% of them very favorable toward him. Death. Soleimani was killed on 3 January 2020 around 1 a.m. local time, 2200 hours UTC 2 January, by missiles shot from American drones which targeted his convoy near Baghdad International Airport. The BBC, NBC News, DW News, Time, The Guardian and other media outlets have said Soleimani was assassinated or described the killing as an assassination. The New York Times compared it to Operation Vengeance in World War II when American pilots shot down the plane carrying Admiral Isoroku Yamamoto. Soleimani had just left his plane, which arrived in Iraq from Lebanon or Syria. His body was identified using a ring he wore on his finger, with DNA confirmation still pending. Also killed were four members of the Popular Mobilization Forces, PMF, including Abu Mahdi al-Muhandis, the Iraqi-Iranian military commander who headed the PMF. Iraqi Prime Minister Mahdi said Soleimani was bringing Iran's response to a letter that Iraq had sent out on behalf of Saudi Arabia in order to ease tensions between the two countries in the region. The Prime Minister did not reveal the message's exact content. Soleimani was posthumously promoted to the rank of Lieutenant General 9 and praised as a martyr by Speaker of the Iranian Parliament Ali Larijani and Mohsen Rezi, a former commander of the IRGC. Soleimani was succeeded by Esmail Ghani as commander of the Quds force. Funeral and burial. 
On 4 January, a funeral procession for Soleimani was held in Baghdad with thousands of mourners in attendance, waving Iraqi and militia flags and chanting death to America, death to Israel. The procession started at the al qadhimiyya Mosque in Baghdad. Iraq's Prime Minister, Adil Abdul Mahdi, and leaders of Iran-backed militias attended the funeral procession. Soleimani's remains were taken to the holy Shia cities of Karbala and Ajif. On 5 January, the remains of the bodies arrived in Avaz and then Mashhad. Tens of thousands of mourners in black clothes attended the funeral procession in the streets, with green, white, and red flags traditionally used by Shiites to symbolize the blood of people killed unjustly and call for avenging their deaths and beating their chests. Miktada al-Sadr paid a visit to Soleimani's house to express his condolence to his family. On 6 January, the body of Soleimani and other casualties arrived at the Iranian capital Tehran. Huge crowds, reportedly hundreds of thousands or millions, packed the streets. Iranian Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei, who had a close relationship with Soleimani, led the traditional Islamic prayer for the dead, weeping at one point in front of the flag-draped coffins. Ali Khamenei mourned openly near the coffin while the general's successor swore revenge. Esmail Ghani, who was named commander of the Quds force hours after Soleimani's killing, said. God the Almighty has promised to get his revenge, and God is the main avenger. Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif asked if Trump had ever seen such a sea of humanity. Soleimani is considered a hero and martyr in Iran. He was the first man to be honored with a multi-city funeral in the history of Iran, and his funeral procession was said to be the second largest after that of Ruhollah Khamenei. On 7 January 2020, a stampede took place at the burial procession for Soleimani in Kerman, attended by hundreds of thousands of mourners, killing 56 and injuring 212 more. Retaliation On 8 January 2020, the Iranian military responded by firing missiles at two U.S. bases in Iraq in the wake of his death, resulting in no casualties reported.